you might not have to hustle for your first deal as hard as you think. Like if you just ask around, there's probably someone you know in the family or one degree of separation that already has a spot that they just don't see the potential with and you could come in and take it over. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, SDR Nation? This is your brother from another mother, Emanuele Pani. I have the unique honor and privilege this week of being your host, as Mike is away on vacation for a little R&R &R time. Uh, this last couple of days, I was in Mexico, also for some R&R &R time. And uh, before we get started with our show and with our guests, which I'm super excited about, I just wanted to kind of share a little bit of the the things I was thinking about while on vacation. Um, one is the need for R&R &R time, right? So rest, rejuvenation, recovery. Um, we are about to go into our busy, busy season. And so we, we really, this wasn't a planned trip, uh, but on Sunday, me and Tasha were like, we, we got to get out of here. Like, right, we need some rest. So if you are about to go into your busy season or at the end of your busy season, I would highly, highly encourage to just take some time, go rest, go recover, go to kind of like process how the year is going, right? We have a little bit left to the year. So like, how is the year going? Things to be grateful for. The second thing I've been thinking about was we went to this very nice hotel. And uh, I know, shame on me for going to a hotel as an Airbnb host, right? But it's a different experience, right? Um, and I am always so generally curious for great experiences. And I think hotels still have so much to teach us as hosts as to what great, great hospitality looks like. And a couple of things that I realized being there was one, how the entire hotel really works as an ecosystem. So no matter who I asked to, they knew what the occupancy was, they knew, um, what system they use, right? Because <laughs> we went a little nerdy. Me and Tasha were like, how are you guys so good, right? Like, what system do you use? And like how everybody was communicating. So all of our needs were communicated across the team and everybody knew her name and everybody knew what room we were in and what we wanted to the point that they brought us breakfast um, one morning. And I said, this little sweet little cake that you brought is my favorite thing. And the guy's like, no problem, Mr. Barney. I'll send you a couple extra ones. I was like, no, it, like this is a random guy. Like it's not, it's not even like a man. Like it was just a random guy. The next morning I had three extra ones at breakfast, right? And so it's the little things that obviously as hosts, we can't really do because we don't have, you know, the breakfast stuff and everything else, but it's the mentality of going above and beyond for our guests that is so important and that we can learn from regular hotels. Number three is just, if you are going for that luxury hospitality and the luxury vacation rentals, go experience luxury near you. So if a guest is coming to your place, what are the other options that they have and what can you learn from who's already doing it around you? Because maybe they have some partnership with the local honey farmer, or they have something like that that could be very cute and unique and is a low barrier to entry that you can just add on to your experience. Okay, now that my little rant is over, I am super excited to introduce our guest. She is a good friend, or at least I think so, to the show. Um, we met her in Nashville um, with our friend Tatiana as well. And her name is Natalie Palmer. And I need my glasses to read her bio because I'm getting older and can't see anymore. I'm going to take a little sip of water. Okay. 
So Nali Power runs a boutique vacation rental management company. It's actively growing your real estate portfolio and is the host of the No Vacancy, the podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts, also because I don't listen to ours because I think it's weird to listen to your own show, um, where she shares weekly hosting advice. She works closely with Airbnb to set new hosts up for success and loves sharing relatable hosting content. She lives in SoCal and manages her mountain listings remotely while working from home with her two under two. So welcome to the show, Natalie. Thank you so much, E. I'm so happy to be here. Such a pleasure. Um, we were talking a little bit off air of, first of all, I don't even know how you do and it's time to do everything with two under two. And if you guys don't follow her on social, she is so funny and posts so many super funny TikTok. Like you're so good at following all the TikTok trends. <laughs> and them to short-term rentals while educating, right? And it's just so amazing to me that like, I don't know, like it's, we all have different ways of sharing the love that we have for vacation rentals and making it funny and relatable, I think goes such a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to say thank you for that, first of all, because I laugh all the time when I see your stuff. And uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started, what the journey has been. Sure, sure. Let me dive into my, my whole story and I'll um, segue that also into the social media side um, because um, thank you for appreciating the reels and the, and the TikToks. A lot of effort goes into that. Um, so yeah, hi everyone. My name is Natalie Palmer and um, how I got started in short-term rentals. Uh, I always joke that my STR journey totally started by accident. I did not set out to like you know, do anything big here. Um, I had not even heard that there was like a such thing, such thing as an STR podcast or education or courses. Uh, I started in December 2017. So coming up on my five year anniversary. And when I got started, it was because my parents had a second home, a condo in Big Bear. Uh, for anyone outside of California, not familiar, it's a ski resort town in SoCal. Mm -hmm. And uh, growing up, we had a vacation home there. And just as we got older, we weren't using it as much as a family. And I always say that I got that hosting itch, whatever it is we all get that just makes you want to jump in. And I convinced my parents to let me start managing their place, which they were not stoked about at first. But I was like, I promise, like, I'm going to put it on Airbnb, you know, they'll check the guests and it'll be legit. And I promise I'll do a good job. And so right off the bat, I guess we entered a co-hosting model when I didn't even know what co-hosting was, but I was taking 20% yeah. from my parents and giving them as the owners everything else and, you know, did the cleanings and stuff. At that time, I didn't even hire a cleaner. Like I was driving up two hours between every guest to do the cleaning because my. I, I like I feel so dumb now, but at the time it just was not like, and in, I wasn't starting a business. That's not how yeah. I viewed it. I just really thought like, cool, we've got this place sitting here. That's empty. A lot of the time, like I could make some money off of doing that. And, um, the way we spaced the guests out, I was like on winter break at the time. So it was like, you know, not a big deal to drive up and do the cleanings. Uh, mm -hmm. wouldn't recommend for anyone starting <laughs> now, just hire a cleaner and run it efficiently. Yeah. For but sure. anyway, after one winter season, um, it was doing so well that my parents reinvested everything and bought a second one, had me manage that. And then from there, other owners in like other neighbors nearby started seeing that we were just constantly booked, had great reviews, um, had way higher nightly rates than they had. And so they asked me to start managing their places as well. So I basically started as a co-host um, and then finally last year purchased my first property after saving all my co-hosting money for like three, four years. Yeah. yeah. This is an awesome story. And so how, where are you at now? So like how many properties are you managing? So you have the one. Yes. So I own the one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I manage currently nine total, um, including the one that I own. Um, so co-hosting eight, the two that I started with for my parents, they're still in the mix. Um, and then, yeah, so nine, nine total. We also just purchased an Airstream um, to do like a unique mm. stay, but I'm still looking for a plot of land to park that right on it, yeah. build out a deck and get the hot tub and everything. Yeah. So that one is not an active rental at the moment. Got it. Oh, that sounds super exciting though. 
because that's yeah. such a cute, unique like experience. And like SoCal, it's like one of the few spots that I guess it's kind of like kind of calls to that unique experience. Yeah. Um, and then, so how did you get into the show? Like what, what made you want to like do your own show? And yeah. Sure. Okay. So that's, that's like a whole other journey. And I always yeah. like at this point, and I'm sure you feel the same way. I really feel that I have two separate businesses, hosting and managing, and then the, you know, educator side podcast host that comes with some brand deals and stuff. Like mm -hmm. it's two very distinct things. There's obviously a lot of overlap with the industry, but, um, yeah, just because you know, like how to host does not mean you know how to be a podcaster. Like it's yeah. so different. 100%. Um, yeah. But how that started was um, I just started kind of organically sharing, um, you know, like you talked about earlier, there's like TikTok trends and stuff and audios that are so stupid and so cheesy. But I immediately was like, oh, I could relate that to hosting. There would be a trend, you know, that people were applying to um, relationships. And I was like, oh, I can, you know, tweak that to the relationship between a host and their guest. And I remember actually in the early days, I had so much fear about posting any reels that yeah. would slightly talk negatively about a potential guest. Um, just because I still wanted to like be professional and I worried if a guest ever stumbled across this. Yeah. And I ended up just going for it. And it's so funny that the reels where I kind of talk shit on guests yeah. <laughs> are my most viewed, most successful, most popular ones. And that really clicked for me was how many hosts started messaging me like, oh my God, I'm, I thought I was the only one. Like the, this is such a lonely business for a lot of people for myself. Like I said, I started not knowing that there was podcasts or courses or anything in this world. Mm -hmm. I was the only host I knew at the time. And it, yeah, that's been really, really cool just to see so many people say like, Oh my God, I thought I was the only one who guests always ask me for the Wi Fi password, even though it's posted in eight different places. And I was like, you no, get it. You're not the only and, one. And we yeah. send them a text message. Yeah. And it's everywhere. And they're still, yeah. I, yeah. Like one of my biggest questions in life is what do these people do at home? Like when we're not there, like who do you call? Like who, who fix, like when you accidentally change the source on, on your TV, who do you call? Because you can't call me or Natalie. And I can't believe that you don't know how to change the source back, right? So I'm like, how do you guys survive? Like, I'm like, how, like, why? Like, how, like, but anyways. No, e, I'm like dying that you just said that because that is actually one of my like mantras that I live by is whenever I have a difficult guest, I always will tell myself, you know what? It's a short term rental. They're going to be gone in two, three days and I never have to see them again. Never have to deal with them. They have to go home and live with themselves for the rest of their lives. Like, 100%. and then I, I flip it to where I feel like lucky and I'm like, wow, thank God I only had to cross paths the, with them the, for two, three uh, days and never again. Yeah, the perspective shift, it's it's huge. And, and you know, I love, I love that you talked about that because at the same time, this is something that a mentor of mine told me many, many years ago is the thing that we most are kind of hesitant to share is the thing that we most share with all people, right? So those little things that you're kind of like, even when you're having a hard time, right? Even when you're like going through stuff and you're just like, oh, I don't want to share this. I'm going to be embarrassed. So like, they're going to judge me. In reality, that rawness and that realness, it's what relates to people. Mm -hmm. If you instead try to just be all, it's all roses and life is beautiful all the time. It's not true because we all know that that's not true, right? Yeah. And so people appreciate the realness of it. And your TikToks are so funny. Like your, your, your reels are so funny. And I'm like, why, like, how could you not relate to this? Right. Yeah. Um, this is where Mike would be good because he would give me time to think which way I want to go. Uh, so I have so many questions. So let's, let's drop into, um, yeah. So I think a lot of our listeners probably have parents that have a vacation home, right? Yeah. So walk us through what the conversation was like, because I, I know you said Airbnb checks it. It's going to be fine. But I also know that you had. Now I know. Talking about. Yeah. Right. I know. So what does that look like? And, and what are some of the systems that you have now learned that yeah. would have changed your life five years ago? Sure. Sure. Um, 
Yeah. And actually, that's going back to what we were just saying, that sometimes the things you're most hesitant to share is the most relatable. I actually, for the longest time, really didn't want to tell people that I got started with my parents' place because I see, you know, you guys like and so many people that I've seen, um, you know, TJ and uh, there's just so many like influencers in the space, Tatiana, a friend of mine and uh, who I see like hustled so hard for that first deal. And I always felt like, oh, my gosh, people aren't going to take me seriously. They're going to think that I just, you know, had parents vacation home that I was able to take over. So that was a part of my story. I was hesitant to share for a while. And actually, that has been now that I've been open about it, something that, again, that relatability piece, a lot of people have said like, whoa, you know, my uncle has this spot. My in-laws have this place. My parents have this place. And I've always loved going there. It's vacant, you know, nine months of the year. Could I do this? And so now that's become like a big part that I'm trying to um, help people with is you might have an opportunity. You might not have to hustle for your first deal as hard as you think. Like if you just ask around, there's probably someone you know in the family or one degree of separation that already has a spot that they just don't see the potential with and you could come in and take it over. So um, back to your question, in the early days, I did think that Airbnb would totally vet my guests and that it was a super (laughs) trusted platform. So thank God my parents didn't press me too hard on that topic. now I see that that is not necessarily the case. No, it's not really true. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, honestly, my best, my best like thing that I've learned from just hosting is, you know, yes, we, we, there are ways now that you can vet guests better. I always require, you know, the government issued ID, like very basic stuff, um, you know, and uh, just making sure like there's no red flags when they're booking, that they're not immediately telling you they're going to bring more people than is allowed. Like, you know, the basic things mm-hmm. like that. But I don't know about you. I feel like I have gained this sixth sense of knowing when a guest is going to be good or bad. And I think that that just comes with practice. You can't teach that. Yeah. Um, But that's really my best. I don't have like a wonderful answer for you on how I bet guests. It's truly like just a gut intuition now that I learned how to how to parse it. Yeah. And you know what's funny to me? It's it's um, I do agree. It comes with experience, right? Like I can immediately because. I have done so much for so long direct bookings that I'm like, I never got to see reviews about people, right? But a lot of the times people would call and I can tell on the phone, on the phone for me, it's very easy, right? Like I'm a very like emotionally like driven person. So I pick up easily. But then over time, you can start telling it also how people write, you know, and how people like act. And it's very like interesting. And then like, in my opinion, and I know this is counterintuitive now that like occupancy has gotten slower and like there is less and less bookings. But if you got a gut feeling, just listen to it. Like even if you're empty and you're like, ah, this five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars would really make a difference. Will it though? Like, is it? Yeah. Because at the same time, like, and then the more you honor that gut feeling and that intuition, the more it finds students and the more it finds suits. And then also on an energetic thing, and we're going to go a little woo-woo for a second, but it's just like, it's the respect to your space and the respect and believing that you can attract the right guests for you at the right time. And it's the same thing. Like, you know, like, don't, don't accept guests that are not in alignment with you. Don't accept clients that are not in alignment with you. And have faith that the universe will still give you all the abundance that you need and all the clients that you need that are the right people for you and they are the right clients for you and they are the right guests for you, right? Yeah. Uh, e, how many times have you had it where you declined a guest because you just had that gut feeling and an hour later, the same dates get booked? I or, mean, for me, longer. it's, they, it's yeah. yeah, yeah, or even longer or a better reservation. Better yeah. The guest is like so nice. They immediately book and seem so gracious to me. It's I mean, nine out of 10 times if I and I decline reservations very rarely. Like, let me say that, too. It's it's not like this is a daily occurrence that I get about, no, yeah, yeah. about a guest. Yeah. But of the times it happens, I mean, I probably decline maybe five reservations a year. Like it's it's not much of the times it happens. It's like nine out of 10 of those times. 
it gets rebooked literally within within an hour, within a couple hours, longer, better reservation, like every time. And so that's another thing, too, that comes with that confidence and just practice and knowing what you have to offer is I used to be like, oh, my gosh, you know, in turmoil for an hour if I declined a guest, like wondering, was should I have just taken the money? Like, we Never could use it. Again, this was yeah. Guest for and me. now I'm just like, it's fine. Something else will come through. I don't care. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So since you guys started five years ago, mm -hmm. you now have two. Nine. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Okay. You're going to talk about how many listings there are. <laughs> yeah, no, you have nine, but you also have two kids now. Yes. Oh, I don't have nine kids. Dear yeah, God. No. <laughs> if not, that would be a whole other show. I'm like, how do you have <laughs> nine kids and nine listings? Um, but you have the two and I believe they're both girls, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how has that been with the growing? Because at the same time you grew the business, right? And it's just like, uh -huh. it's almost like that. There is the two philosophies, like don't put too much on your plate by the same time, the more stuff you put on your plate, then you also kind of just figure out how to do life with more stuff on your plate. Yeah. So, and for all the young moms that we have that are probably getting started in the business similar to you. Because two under two, they can be intense. Like I have my 16 year old um, cousin living at home and she's fully grown and she's still just throwing a wrench into my life as to like how much she needs all the time. I'm like, how, like you're 16 girl, like what, like, <laughs> why can't you throw this thing out? Like, like <laughs> it's, it's empty. Just throw it in the garbage. Like I'm like, what are like, right. So I'm like, how, how do you do it? Like how? How has it been and how that's, do you do it? That's so funny because I actually feel like babies are easy. Like there are difficult days, but I am terrified of when they become teenagers. So um, <laughs> I admire you right now for dealing with a 16 year old. I'm so scared for the I'll day. I know how it goes. We still have like six months, you know? <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, with with having two little ones, it's definitely what you said about sometimes that you just take more things on your plate and it it just works out because it has to. There's no, I don't even think about it. People will be like, isn't it hard? I don't even think about it that way. Like I just, I have two kids and I also have this business. Like that's it. I have to make it work. And it doesn't even, I don't really think about it. Like there are days where I'm like, okay, this was a much harder day, but overall it's like, this is just life. Like um, I would never have wanted to put off having kids for the business yeah. Um, and I also don't believe that I have to, you know, put off the business right now either. Like I, I've just figured out a way to kind of grow them both together. I manage it remotely. Um, I'm barely ever in Big Bear now myself, which in some ways makes me sad because I really like got into hosting because I loved the guest experience. Like I said, mm -hmm. I started as the cleaner. I would drive two hours to do the cleanings and I'm obviously glad I outsourced that part, but there are times that I miss it. Like, believe it or not, I really loved like being the one to fluff the pillows and like mm -hmm. spray room freshener spray before guests came in. That stuff is so meaningful to me and being a part of it. And sometimes I'd be leaving as the guests came and having that face to face connection was always really nice. And so certain things that I've had to give up, um, I loved working with new owners that I would co-host for and being the one to set up and design their listing. I don't do that anymore. And so there's things I've had to, you know, give up. But overall, I'm still able to do the business. You just have to really be um, efficient about like which pieces you're going to still keep on and what you're going to outsource. Yeah. So what does your day to day on the hosting side look like now? And what are the technology stack that you use to kind of like help you manage it remotely? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So I am embarrassed to say that my tech stack is actually very limited. Um, it's basically like smart lock, yeah. noise monitor, ring camera, like the security things. Yeah. And and that's about it. Um, we've got a pricing software as well. Okay. And besides that, like I text my cleaners to schedule them. Um, my parents actually, um, this has been a really cool, fulfilling part of my journey too, is my mm -hmm. parents have both retired. And now they help a ton with the business. Okay. And so they're now taking a cut from all the other co-hosting deals. And it's just like such a cool full circle thing that yeah. it started with them having this opportunity, you know, this property that I thought I could do something with. And it's turned around to me now giving them like, here's nine more that you can help manage because I don't have time anymore. Yeah. Um, 
and and they love it. So my mom is now like the onboarding queen. She's the one who works with all new owners we take on and designs their listing and sets up everything. Yeah. Um, my dad is like, he's all our properties too are in an HOA. So he's HOA president now because he just, <laughs> there's so many things, you know, like. You got to protect it now. Yeah. 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 Now, now the conscious of bylaws if that is involved. So that's good. Exactly. Um, um, I, I yeah, love so- that you brought, you brought that up with the pants. So there's, you brought up two things that I, I love. Um, one is this last thing you brought up with your, with your parents. And, and to me, that is the ecosystem of, of vacation rentals. Cause it's the same thing. Like as we grow as hosts, we share the goodness that we benefit from with everybody around us. Right. So that goes to the cleaners and, and my, my cleaning team, right? Like my cleaning team, they get to grow and then they get to hire more people. And it's such an honor and such a privilege that I get to have to like support their business, yeah. my, my contractor, my pool company. Right. But then in, in your case, also your, your parents. Right. And same thing with Mike. Mike was like, Kristen got to retire. And then like his parents, like his mom. And like, it's just the business that just keeps on giving in such a way that like your nine to five can never do. Right. <laughs> the second thing is similar to you. I also miss sometimes when I started as a maintenance guy, right? And I miss that like human interaction. And sometimes when the days come that the team is busy and I have to go back out, I love it and I miss it. But at the same time, I have to be mindful of what is my highest and best and where, where can you most support our team and our ecosystem? Right. Because then as the head of the ecosystem or like as part of the head of the ecosystem, I'm very blessed. It's me and Tasha. So like we're both responsible for like growing it in different ways. What is my highest and best for the wealth of the ecosystem? So where do you spend your time on now? Other than the show, right? So like, what does that look like? Or are you mostly primarily on the show side and education side now? Yeah, that's a great question. So on the, on the short-term rentals themselves, I spend less than an hour a day. If that, like it's, I mean, honestly, maybe 15 minutes a day, unless there's a day where like, you know, it's the middle of winter and a guest calls me the furnace broke. Like, okay, I will drop whatever I'm doing and we will get the furnace repaired for you. But for the most part, it's, honestly, 10, 15 minutes a day to just, you know, go in, make sure messages got sent out and everyone who's checking in has the info, um, you know, texting the cleaner a reminder, like very, very basic stuff. And uh, for the most part now, I do spend more of my time on like the education podcast side, social media, all of that. Um, However, I still refuse like I've thought so much about hiring like a VA or getting that taken care of for guest messages because that's the one thing I still do. I am the one who communicates with all guests and I have not given that part up. And I go back and forth a lot because I know it's maybe not the most efficient way to spend my time, Mm -hmm. but because I'm now on the education side, I want to stay like, I want to stay fresh. I want to stay on top of my stuff and see new questions that guests have and like learn through addressing those problems, um, you know, see what they're complaining about, see if something's continuously broken or they have trouble finding the place. That'll help me a lot in being like, okay, this is a common thing people deal with or getting a, you know, false review or a retaliatory review. I like as much as I hate it. I like at the end of the day, being the one who calls Airbnb to try and get the review removed because I just learned so much from like, oh, this is how Airbnb is handling this now. So there are certain things where even though I know I could outsource, I kind of still keep it close um, because I just feel like I can't call myself an educator if I'm like completely detached from the business stuff. Yeah, no, and I think, and I think honestly, um, it's, I respect that a lot because I think there is a lot of educators that are not not legit because they're not players. And to me, there is there is a difference between I like to play. And so like I don't this is the only thing that I would consider that I do that is educational for 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 the community at large. 
and and I occasionally go into our community, the CR secret community, and I get feedback on questions. But what I realized is also like, which is so beautiful is as our community grows, by the time I get to a question, there's so many answers on there that are way better than mine, mm -hmm. or at least just as good as mine that I'm like, I don't need to add anything to this. Right. Um, I completely lost my train of thought, but anyways, so. Oh yeah, I found that again. Um, so you have, regardless of who you go to learn from, just make sure that there are legit and they do play and they have listings and they have listings that are current to right now and they're actively posting because mm -hmm. there's so many people that go and we know a lot of people that have coaching programs and I know a lot of horror stories of people that like see their program repeated by somebody else that just came in, yep. learned it for a week, copy and paste everything, relabeled it, and is now selling it. So be very wary of, again, like the people that we have on this show are all vetted people in the sense that like we know them personally. We admire them personally. For example, like this show right now, it's, it's yeah. I know Natalie personally. I've got to like hang out with her. I got to learn from her. I listen to your show. Tasha listens to your show. And she's like, this shit is good. You should get to have it. <laughs> I'm like, babe, you're right. I don't know why we haven't had her on the show. <laughs> we even talked about it in Nashville and then it just escaped my mind, right? But like, just like, be, be wary. And if something is too cheap to be true, invest in, invest in something that is like real because then the other stuff is not, there is no experience behind it. And going back to the energetic exchange, if the person didn't do their work, they can't support you the way you need to be supported because they just, they just can't because they don't know what they're doing. They just did oh. a course of a week, copy and paste it, change the branding on it. And now they're selling shit because they just want to get on the bandwagon of Yay, short-term rental seekers are popular now. And then in a month, the same person is probably going to have a course on cryptocurrency and a course on options trading and, and all this bullshit. Like just watch the people that love their craft and have actually dedicated time to their craft. And that's something that is very clear with, with you. And just I your experience, you know? I really appreciate that. And I swear we are on the same wavelength or something because actually just last night I had called my sister and was venting to her because I happen to know, you know, once you're in the industry and stuff and you know all the other players and educators and influencers on this side, um, I have now heard of who is copying whose courses. And mm -hmm. You can, I now am able, like, because I can see what a real social media following looks like. I can tell when someone like bought their followers and stuff. And, you know, I will not name names. I am too classy for that. But I know like a handful of people yeah. who they um, know who they are. They know who they yeah. are. And yeah, there was, um, I'll give you one example. There was a yeah. girl who said something like, went from her bio is something along, uh, went from owning zero to 40 properties in one year. Mm -hmm. And I happen to know from a source, I will not say, but I happen to know from a person, from a person, from a person that her dad owns 40 properties and brought her on as a receptionist to just help, you know, field some calls for guest mm -hmm. experience. And, you know, maybe he added her to the titles and she technically owns them. I don't know that. But that is such a unethical way of saying that you went yeah. from zero to owning 40 in a year. And of course, mm -hmm. she sells a course for, I don't know, a few thousand dollars. And that stuff just like hurts me to see mm -hmm. that anyone would pay for something like that when there's so yeah. much uh, free resources like this and also legit paid ones, you know? Yeah. Um, People that care. Ooh, like, and, yeah. and, and also, it's, it's, it makes people feel like shit at the same time, right? Because when you see something like that and, and comparison is the thief of all joy, right? But it's a natural, natural thing. Like you can't help it. Like we all compare and we all see. So when you see somebody like that and you don't know the inner workings of it, 
then you're just making people feel like she because like, ah, why can I do that? And in reality, it's like, you can't do it because she is not, nobody's doing it. Yeah. Like that's not like there is a unicorns in life and I don't take anything away from them, but the unicorns in life, you can see why they're unicorns because they work their ass off and they have the battle scars to prove it. Mm -hmm. And to me, why are you making, like, why do you need that? Like, why do you need to make all this shit up to make people feel inappropriate or not at the same level as you when really you're just a fraud yourself? And that's also, I can't imagine that feels good to you. Like, you know, like, how do you go to sleep? Yeah. If you I, by yourself, like how? It's, it's like, so you know? sad too that like people don't have confidence in what they can offer like i know i am not um i am not on the level you you guys are at or a lot of your guests that you bring on are very very high level performers like constantly acquiring and onboarding new stuff and mm -hmm. you know i've been five years i've got nine listings i only own one of them like i know i'm have a ways to go but being transparent about your your story and stuff i have found my tribe of people who find yeah. me relatable and are like oh you know she's only a few steps ahead like that looks attainable i want to work with her and listen to her and learn from her yeah. and then there's other people who are further along that you guys are the right fit for them and it just makes me sad that people feel like they have to fake certain things and it, yeah i don't know well, i don't know how we got into this whole time i don't know but, but, it's, it's, but <laughs> after when mike is not around and and i get to kind of like just kind of kind of <laughs> conversations um and yeah and and i i talk about this a lot also from a perspective of like honoring just just the seasons of life right and understanding that like i am not i'm not mike like i look at mike very similar to what you're talking about right like mike has had he, him and i perform in very different ways and I am very much more like there's days that I cannot get myself to do things that I don't want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there is different things, but like I don't compare myself to Mike. And that's been a lot of work on 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 my part, because I know my little my little devil is sometimes is there talking shit and yeah. it's like, you should be better. You should do more. Why can't be doing that? You could, could be, along. you know, like, yeah. And then you just got to be like, thank you. We're good. <laughs> I appreciate it. Right. And just like. Understanding that the most important thing in life is the inner peace of like, I am where I am, experiencing what I'm supposed to be experiencing right now, going through where I need to go through. And what I see over there, it's now my experience, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So I know we have a hard stop soon. So I want to be mindful of your time. Plus two under two. <laughs> I don't, and it's a Saturday, so we're recording this on a Saturday. So thank you so much for um, changing our schedule because we had to change it because I went on vacation and now my Which you deserve. Yes. <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, so I, I mean, I think I made it pretty evident that like I acknowledge a lot of what you do and like the, the work that you put into your business and all the content that you put out. Um, and I think it's so important. And I know your voice is giving power to your community, to the right people that like wouldn't have a voice or wouldn't feel inspired otherwise. And they see Natalie that like, dude, I have two kids. I can be just like <laughs> Natalie, right? So where can people find you? When can people know more about you? I know you and Tatiana have an awesome woman event coming up soon. So talk a little bit about, about that as well. Yeah, yeah. If I can shamelessly self-promote for a second, um, Tatiana Taylor-Tate, who's also been a guest of the show before, um, her and I are actually planning an all-women's short-term rental summit uh, in February in Scottsdale. And I am so excited for that. I can't even tell you. Um, it was actually Mike's and Bill's event, the STR Wealth Conference, that um, I had the best time at. And truly, that conference was life-changing. Like I left with so many connections and just a whole new perspective on the industry. And coming back from that, I think we were like, okay, we love that. I'm definitely going next year and everything. And we were like, we can, 
you know, I think we see the potential in this and we need to do like a more girly feminine spin on it. Like we want more of the talk about guest experience and um, the details and which sheets to pick. And uh, it's just so cool to me how many different perspectives and and conferences are out there. You know, STR WealthCon was very much about like wealth growing and and scaling and really getting a lot of properties and all of that. And, um, you know, for me, I looked forward most to like the design panel and stuff like that. And so this is going to be very, we'll still talk about at our event, um, you know, arbitrage, co-hosting, scaling. Uh, we've got Julie George, Stacey St. John, Rachel, a lot of the same uh, heavy, wonderful heavy like, yeah. powerhouse speakers. So yeah. I'm really excited about our lineup. Um, we've got Sarah and Annette from Thanks for Visiting and uh, really proud of the lineup that we put together. And, you know, but we we definitely want to bring it back to that focus that like we personally as women, I think are drawn to more and got started with. And that is like, the design and spending time on wallpaper and murals. And I'm just so excited to go like, we've got like all these stupid mean girls quotes. We're like <laughs> integrating into stuff that like we could never do at an event that's heavily male dominated. Yeah. So it's like letting us be really creative and fun. Yeah. So if you are a female in the short term rental space and you want, you know, you're kind of craving more of that, um, you know, the acquisition side is good. But I, like you said, there's the angel and devil on your shoulder. I feel like my devil is like, buy more, buy more, keep going. And my angel is like, hold on. Are your guests having a good time? Are you getting five-star reviews? Are people still booking your place? Do you have those scroll-stopping images? So if that's yeah. the kind of stuff that resonates with you, um, head to levelupyourlistingsummit.com. And we've got tickets on sale now. And just so excited to to bring this event forward. And yeah, we are her to it. Me. can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> I hope your wife can yeah, come. Man. Yeah, I told her, I, I sent her the link and like the other day we got, I got an early link and I sent that out to a bunch of people because I'm like, it's one, and I made this joke as the, as the STR World Conference in Nashville, men should feel themselves very blessed that we are even allowed to play in this space because really this could be a woman run industry a hundred percent through and through. I know it is in my house, like <laughs> before, before Tasha came along. I was doing shit on like an Excel spreadsheet and I didn't have like the systems and Tasha came in and really posting the systems. And like, I am the devil that is always like, we need to grow more <laughs> on board more properties. And Tasha is like, our systems are not dialed in enough for us to do that. Right. Yeah. And like, so I'm super excited because I can even imagine, um, just the value and just the networking and the quality of friendships that can come out of an event like that. Yeah. Because to me, that's been some of my greatest friends have come out of conferences and masterminds and, and just literally life changing like me and Mike, right? Um, what is the name of your show? You didn't collect your show in. Oh yeah. My, my podcast actually, and I'll give one more shout out before we leave the conference topic, but, um, my, no, Mike's not here today, but actually his wife, Kristen, um, we're having her on our design panel as well. Mm -hmm. Cause they do, you guys know yeah. the coolest, like She's amazing. themed rooms and stuff. So I'm really excited, um, that we're going to, we're going to work her in for sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be great. And definitely everything you said about, um, you know, I think like, I think married couples are such a good team in this industry because I've met so many couples who go to events together where it really is you know I mean I know we're not supposed to talk about this stuff this day but like let's be honest about different gender roles like men are very much like let's get more let's get more and I think women are the ones who go back and say like let's get our ducks in a row before we scale it's so quality, right like it's yeah quality. and yeah and that's like what we're just so excited to like bring forward and, and focus on. So yes, that's that's about the conference, levelupyourlistingsummit.com. And then my personal show is No Vacancy, the podcast, um, also under Hospitality FM. Um, so under the same network as you guys. And um, yeah, I run a much more casual show, I would say, than you guys. Like you guys really have all-star guests. But, um, you know, mine is kind of more like we shoot the shit on just what's going it, on. It, and it's, um, I mean, again, like I, I personally love it. Um, it's one of the shows that I listen to. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts anymore because again, like I think most podcasts are there to kind of tell you what you're not 
doing in life. And, and I went through a phase in my life that I was listening to a lot of shows and, and my coach um, at the time was like, you need to stop taking in so much information because you're always unhappy because there's just so much out there that you just keep looking between and you just instead just listen to you and listen to shows that like we do listen to shows. So I took a, a very long kind of like sabbatical out of, out of listening to shows and audiobooks and everything else. Um, which was right around the time we started this show, which was very funny. It's kind of like I started producing content to then not listen to content. <laughs> uh, but like just when you do listen to shows, just be mindful of like how you feel afterwards. And if, if there are shows that like add to your life and you feel good and like all of your shows and your reels is stuff that makes me laugh. So it's stuff that I want more of in my life. And um, you know how the show goes now. So you know what question is coming up. Yes. And I'm very curious from your perspective, right? What is the number one secret for success in short-term rentals? And I would like you to give me one from your hosting experience and then one from the best of the best from your show. Okay. It's actually the same piece of advice for both. Um, if that's okay, I don't know if I'm cheating here, but um, my, oh, my best, <laughs> my best short-term rental secret and just life secret and, and tip is, uh, create spaces you want to be in. And I started doing that with my short-term rentals from day one with designing them and setting them up for guests. I always said, where would I want to stay? Would I want to book this place? Would I want to be here? And I always carried that with me, create spaces you want to be in. And it just kind of hit me actually, like in the last couple of weeks as we were getting things ready to launch our summit website and stuff. And I realized like, oh my gosh, with this event, I also created a space I wanted to be in. Like we, my podcast is the same way. It's um, everything you said about how a lot of shows, even though there's so much value to them, I feel sometimes like oh, I'm not doing enough after I listen to some other things. Yeah. Mine, I really just try to make it like, I'm just your cheerleader. I'm just like a hosting BFF who can relate to you. And I, and I get that guests drive us crazy and sometimes cleaners flake. And it's just more like, you know, venting and, and yeah. kind of just more casual. Yeah. I love yeah. 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 And I think I've just like that. That's my tip. I hope that that like resonates with people, but like, I just carry that through everything now is just create spaces you want to be in. Start doing it with the rooms and the short-term rentals you're putting forward, whatever it is, co-hosting, a boutique hotel, a glam site. And after you've got that down, like there's just so many ways you can create other, carve out the spaces you want to be in in the industry. It's been such a pleasure. I, I knew this was going to be a great show. I'm sorry Mike couldn't be here. Um, to our community, I did my best. I know this show is going to sound a little bit different. I definitely caught myself at the beginning just being super nervous. And like, even like, just, just to be transparent, right? Like I, I don't like, this is not my job by myself. Right. <laughs> and I, you can tell because I can, I can tell at the beginning, I was so nervous that like I was running out of breath and like, sometimes no matter how much you've done something, you're nervous. And there is not right or wrong about it. It's just the gift of your human experience is all the emotions that you feel. Your emotions are not wrong. You just learn how to like swing and flow with them a little bit better and just handle yourself. So whatever you're going through, if you're feeling a lot of emotions, just embrace them, love yourself. And it's been my absolute pleasure to host the show today by myself with Natalie. Thank you so much for, um, yeah, you've been a great, great Thank guest. You. Um, and e, you know what? Nerves are a good thing. I've learned. It means you're taking it seriously, whatever it is. If you just I, rolled in yeah. like hungover and didn't care, you know, like I like I'm I don't know. It's definitely yeah. human to see people. Who I like care. Yeah, exactly. I care yeah. so much about it. And like it's part of the reason why I don't do coaching is because I'm like, I care so much about everything. And I'm like, I cannot like I cannot put this on my on my plate. And I'm like, I love to like be the way I describe myself is like almost like the cool uncle that just gets to like roll in <laughs> love on people shower you with gifts show up for you our community knows if you need me I'm there for like a raw heart to heart conversation but don't expect uncle E to be the responsible one <laughs> don't expect uncle E to know 
what's going on, where are we going, what's the like even even now she's like it's gonna be the same link. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know anything. I just show up, you know. But again, I am. I do it with love. I know you do it with love too. And I think that's more of what we need on our in our community and in the world as well, right? If we're all a little bit kinder and a little bit more lovey dovey towards each other, we'll just create better experiences and a better life. And on that, <laughs> we'll leave you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll be back next week with Mike and some other awesome guests. Ciao, guys. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.